As inauguration day drew near, the world held its breath. Would the U.S. see a peaceful transfer of power? Thankfully, Wednesday's ceremony was as it should have been, albeit with a smaller, physically distanced crowd and members of the National Guard keeping everyone safe. But now is when the work begins. The period of transition that normally takes place prior to January 20th, this time needing to happen mostly afterward. But if we're honest, a very long transition will be at play. There is much work to be done to heal the divide that widened so precipitously over the last four years, and not just in the U.S., but even reverberating here in Canada as well. Now, the need for a transition, well, that shouldn't be a surprise to us because transitions are simply part of life as we move from one circumstance to another, one situation to another, always changing and growing. And in the beginning of Jesus' ministry, there was a transition there as well. Mark says his ministry began in Kairos, in the fullness of time, but that doesn't mean that he appeared out of nowhere. Mark hints at this by saying that Jesus began his ministry after John's arrest. Similarly, last week in John's Gospels, we read how some of Jesus' first disciples were, before that, disciples of John the Baptist. Taking these details together, scholars suggest that Jesus himself was first a disciple of John the Baptist and only later headed out on his own when John's arrest and then his death made it necessary if John's work and message were to continue. And yet even though there is this transition, this transfer of power, so to speak, there's a difference in tone in Jesus' message when he adds, believe the good news to John's message of repent, change your heart and lives. There's a joy in Jesus' version of the message, which motivates some to ask, why do John's disciples fast, but Jesus' disciples don't? Jesus, in response, calls himself the bridegroom. He was saying that unlike John's disciples who were fasting in anticipation of the new age, that the Messiah was going to usher in. That Jesus' disciples knew that they didn't need to wait any longer, that the new age of God's reign had come. And so Jesus spent his ministry helping people to experience what that meant, both in what he taught and, crucially, in what he did, especially as he shared meals with those who were look down upon, and heal them as well. In these ways, he makes clear that God's love is inclusive and immediate, that we don't need to approach a angry and distant God from through a temple or oh, through the various rungs of power to an emperor, that God is within and around us, that God is in each other and in all things, like the trees experienced by Chakwesh Pepenishu as friends. When we see this, we've experienced the good news. And when we live out what this means, God's reign, the new age, has come. Now, as I say this, I know that there are doubts in my heart as well as all of ours, because how can we say the new age of God's reign has come 
when the Confederate flags and anti-Semitic t-shirts from two weeks ago underline that we still live in the age of empire, as John the Baptist and Jesus and both of their disciples had, that we're still held in a system of domination and division, where hierarchies rule, and the wealth that is generated from the resources of others flows to the center of a privileged view. That is the story of Chakwesh Elizabeth Penishu. Her story tells us that this still is what goes on. Like John the Baptist, who was arrested for challenging a client king of the Roman Empire. She was repeatedly jailed for her protests, along with other Hindu activists. Protests simply against the training flights, low-level military flights taking place by NATO. She and others walked the land, doing so since the 1980s to say that these military flights weren't taking place over an empty wasteland. They were taking place over the traditional land of the Innu people and more than just their home, home to caribou and other animals impacted every time a sonic boom happened when the jets flew past. Her walks out onto the land also focused on the environmental impacts of development and the social impacts of that on her people. The Innu have been going through their own transition since being settled into communities by the government in the 1960s. The issue of substance abuse in Innu communities is well documented and very much brought on by the loss of a traditional way of life. Shakwesh's walks highlighted the importance of that cultural way, as well as protesting Canada's policies and practices. Many of us in this community have benefited from Canada, but Innu history reminds us that our way of life has harmed the ways of life of countless others. The reality of empire, be it British or Roman or American, has always been a legacy of injustice. And so given all this, it's understandable to say, well, our teaching that God's reign has come, well, that's a lie. It's not true. The new age hasn't come and perhaps it never could. I understand the reaction, but today's reading suggests something else to me. That God's reign was not to come in an instant, but to grow into being one generation after another. This is why Jesus called Simon and Andrew, James and John. Disciples, they have one task. They are to learn from their teacher and to pick up where their teacher leaves off. And that is our call as disciples, all of us from one generation to the next. To take to heart, take, take to heart the worldview that Jesus taught when he shared meals with outsiders, when he healed those who were looked down upon, when he drew deep on, wit, on the witness of love, and we draw deep on his call to justice. When we do, we embody the new age that we seek. Jesus' first followers did this in the context of the Roman Empire. Chakwesh did it in the context of protecting her Innu culture. We do it in our own community in the GTA responding to the situations we encounter. We may want to help out of the cold and therefore support people who are sleeping rough. We may want to learn more about the impacts of racism in our country and so learn how to confront it. We may do any number of things, but each of them a way to extend God's love and to embody Jesus' example. 
One important practice that Jesus modeled was prayer, where he would withdraw in prayer and in communion with God experience the deep connection, a deep connection of dancing trees, so to speak, the kairos of God's reign made possible. That reminds me that Simon, Andrew, James, and John didn't just leave behind their fishing gear. They needed to leave behind their worldview as well. Didn't just change their jobs, but they needed to change their hearts. We can't do this by ourselves. It takes grace. And so I really believe that the transition that we are in the midst of is a spiritual one. One that is a transition in each of our hearts. It makes me wonder if this is why we're still as immersed in empire as we are, because we've never really taken that seriously. Despite all the progress we made, I'm all too conscious that it was so-called Christians who stormed Capitol Hill. For too long, we have joined Christianity and empire to each other, making allegiance a substitute for spiritual maturity. I know in my life, I need to face where I still cling to empire in my heart where I judge others, where I want to keep my comforts even though they are gained at the expense of others, where I benefit from hierarchy all the while saying that we're all the beloved of God. And I can only do that in the context of prayer, opening my heart to the fullness of Kairos, to the fullness of God's love. Only then will they experience the new age of God's reign. Each of us will experience that heart by heart, taking place over time, changing how we see each other, how we treat each other, how we live with each other. Now, friends, I confess at times I wish the coming of the New Age had been as instantaneous as the disciples had wanted it to be. There's too much heartache in this very long transition. But a gradual transition is how life is. It's how love is. And that's okay. And so in the meantime, may we just keep walking in the time of transition. May we make a good Mishkana, make a good road for future generations to follow. May it be so. Amen.